If I had gut issues, would I take an antibiotic or a natural antimicrobial? Roll the titles. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Before I jump into the video, just a quick reminder that I'm now offering the SIBO organic acid stool tests and consult via my website. So if you have any health or digestive problems, then consider taking these tests as they will provide a lot of very detailed information upon which you can start making informed decisions and then start getting your health back on track. And on that bombshell, to the video. So I speak to so many people on a weekly basis who are dealing with SIBO, parasites, bacterial infections, H. pylori infections, C. diff infections, and everything in between. And one of the most common questions that I get, should I take an antibiotic or natural antimicrobial to fix the gut? Now, first I will caveat this as I do with the people that I help and say that I am not a doctor. If you are in a situation where antibiotics are required, then your first port of call should always be with your doctor. If you have a serious infection, then antibiotics will be required and they are a life-saving medication. But beyond this caveat, I want to give you my take on antibiotics and antimicrobials so that you understand the differences between them so that you can make informed decisions as to what's right for you. There are so many issues and infections in the gut that don't require antibiotics and can simply and effectively be dealt with with natural antimicrobials. So why would you take an antibiotic if you don't have to, given the issues we know that they cause? Now, before I give you my take on antibiotics and antimicrobials, you need to be able to understand how they work so you can make those informed decisions. So within cells and bacteria, you have what's called efflux pumps. And these efflux pumps work as the waste disposal to remove toxins such as antibiotics. So quite simply, these efflux pumps are transporter proteins. So on screen now, you will see the bacterial cell and outside the bacterial cell, you have the antibiotic. The antibiotic gets taken up into the cell and then the antibiotic gets metabolized in the cell and broken down. Now in a normal cell, these efflux pumps are vital for clearing debris, but when you have a bacterial infection, these efflux pumps create a problem because the antibiotics that you want in the cell are being pumped out. And this is why efflux pumps are widely implicated in antibiotic resistance because they help evacuate a high proportion of clinically relevant antibiotics from the bacterial cell into the extracellular environment outside of the bacterial cell wall. So if you have a H. pylori infection in the stomach and take an antibiotic to kill off the infection, the efflux pumps are working overtime to remove the antibiotic from the bacterial cell to try and protect the bacteria. So you know I love, love a good analogy. So my background is boats, navy, and all things nautical. So picture the scene. So you're out on a ship in the year 1850 and you develop a leak and a hole in your boat. And this is long before water pumps or anything like that. So in that situation, you need to get the hole plugged up as quickly as possible and you would typically use buckets to bail out the water. So you have all of this water coming on board and you know if you don't get the water out as quickly as possible, then the ship will eventually sink. And this is the same with antibiotics and bacterial cells. If those efflux pumps don't remove the antibiotics quickly enough, then the cell is going to perish. So in this analogy, the bucket which is bailing out the water is the efflux pump. So whether you are taking antibiotics or antimicrobials to kill SIBO parasites or anything else, then you want to be trying to inhibit or break those efflux pumps so that the bacterial cell will be killed off because without this, it becomes more challenging. So in the back of your mind when taking antibiotics or antimicrobials, you should always be thinking, what is the best way that I can inhibit those efflux pumps? Now, before I jump into antibiotics in slightly more detail, I want to jump into natural antimicrobials first. So natural antimicrobials are simply natural antibiotics that exist in nature. Often these natural antibiotics are then isolated and concentrated in pill form to help with certain diseases and infections. Now, just because they are natural, don't be fooled into thinking that they are a substandard option. So for example, if you have a SIBO infection, then herbal therapies are at least as effective as rifaximin for the resolution of SIBO, and rifaximin is the go-to pharmaceutical antibiotic of choice. Herbals also appear to be as effective as triple antibiotic therapy for SIBO rescue therapy for rifaximin non-responders. Now, all this means if you take something like berberine, grapefruit seed extract, or allicin for SIBO, 
it will be as effective as an antibiotic for removing the infection from the small intestines. The only downside to this is that often natural antibiotics will work slower than a pharmaceutical antibiotic, but obviously they are less destructive on the microbiome, so there are pros and cons for all. Now there are dozens of natural antimicrobials that are used from SIBO all the way through to C. diff infections, and these include allicin, oregano oil, caprylic acid, grapefruit seed extract, berberine, ginger, golden seal, and clove. And the type of infection that you have will ultimately determine the type of natural antibiotic you use. Now what all of these natural antibiotics have in common is that they all have the ability to knock out those efflux pumps and stop them working as effectively. And there are many of these natural antibiotics that are being researched for their ability to knock out efflux pumps in things like cancer treatments and also new antibiotics to win the fight against antimicrobial resistance. For many infections where antibiotics are required, then it is often more beneficial to take antibiotics in conjunction with natural antimicrobials to help further inhibit those efflux pumps. But this needs to be discussed with your doctor and it very much depends on what you are dealing with. Do not just take an antibiotic and glug down natural antimicrobials, as many of these compounds can inhibit or speed up the absorption rate of the antibiotic, so you have got to know what you are doing. So in answer of whether I would take an antibiotic or a natural antimicrobial, it very much depends. If you have a serious infection, then there is no question. You take the antibiotic under the guidance of your doctor. If you have a SIBO infection, H. pylori infection, C. diff infection, parasites, candida, or anything that can be treated naturally, then why would you want to take an antibiotic? In many cases, natural antimicrobials have been demonstrated to be as effective as antibiotics with a lot less risk. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. And as always, remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time.